Hey there, welcome to Business 163, Personal Finance. I'm really excited that you are a part of this course and in this first video micro lecture, we're going to just chat a little bit about why this course is so important for everyone who might enroll and complete this course. So, um, as you can see from the very first slide here, we are looking at answering the question, why personal finance? Why is this class important to begin with? So one of the things that we want to stress right now is just simply what is personal finance? What is the topic we're going to be talking about over the course of these next several weeks? And as you can see here from the slide, a basic definition of personal finance, which of course probably is no brainer for us, it's managing your money to enjoy more of what life can offer. It isn't necessarily, for instance, about increasing your income. It's not only about decreasing your spending. It's about managing all aspects of your personal financial life, your money, to be able to take advantage of opportunities that may come your way, to avoid big mistakes that might have some really significant long-term consequences in the future. It's all of those kinds of things. And as you can see here in the second bullet point, personal finance includes all sorts of topics like budgeting, saving, investing, banking, insurance, mortgages, investments, retirement planning, credit and debt, tax and estate planning. There's an enormous amount of topics that can go into this. And one of the things that we would tell you is there's all sorts of related things that quite frankly, as an introductory class, we will only touch on lightly. For instance, while we will we'll go into significant detail about planning your personal budget, we won't really go that deeply into, for instance, selecting a career or a major uh, that will maximize your income. We will have some things to say about that, but that is a topic unto itself. And so you can see how it will be somewhat related to this topic, especially in terms of your income. But really, you sort of see from the slide what the focus of this class will be on. Returning to the slide, you can see here, sometimes personal finance, that term, can be used to refer to, well, the entire industry of professionals that provides all sorts of financial services to individuals and households and advises them about financial and investment opportunities. So um, sometimes you'll read that term, it will refer to talking to a financial advisor or a financial consultant, a professional who has certification in those kinds of areas to make recommendations to you and help you uh, work with uh, uh, building a very specific complex plan. However, in this course, really what we're about is giving you the basics so that you can understand, generally speaking, how money works, how money works in your life, how money can work for you, how money uh, used perhaps uh, with poor decisions can actually work against you. We'll talk about all those kinds of things in this class. So we go to the next slide then, you can see here, why should I care? Why should I care about this class? Why should I take the time to really put in the effort to understand what we'll be talking about this semester? And you can see here, personal finance is about meeting personal financial goals. I can't tell you what goals you should have, but they may include things like having enough for your short-term financial needs, having enough for, for instance, your retirement planning. And for some of you, perhaps you are of a particular age where retirement is probably so far off in your thinking, you haven't really thought very much about it. And well, of course, Others enrolled in this class may be thinking very, very carefully about retirement because they're closer to that kind of a particular life event. Either way, this really is the time to think about planning for retirement as well as all sorts of other financial goals you might have. Things like if you have a child or if you're planning to have a child, how will that child attend college or a university? Um, what about planning for vacations? What about planning for other large financial events like perhaps someday buying a car or even buying a home. All of those kinds of things are personal financial goals that you will think about in this class. Again, I can't tell you what the absolute best goals for you to have are. That's really up to you and your life, but we will help you to think through those things. 
Those things depend a lot whether you'll meet your personal financial goals depends on the second bullet point there on your income, your expenses, your living requirements, and of course what your individual goals and desires are. You'll uh, see as we go through this class, we are not about telling you what you should be buying, what is an acceptable purchase, and what is uh, blatantly a poor choice. Those kinds of things are very much dependent upon your personal situation. We will give all of us some guidelines to think about, but again, these are very personal, very, uh, very, very custom and personalized kinds of choices. And so, uh, returning to the slide here, the third bullet point, what is personal finance about? It's about coming up with a plan. It's coming up with a plan to fulfill those needs within your financial constraints. Nobody makes an unlimited amount of money. No one can spend an infinite amount of financial resources. And so within your financial constraints, how do you come up with an intelligent plan that you can execute and follow? And so this class is about learning the basic building blocks that will help you distinguish between, well, good advice, bad advice that you may see perhaps from other people, in books, on the internet, and also, most importantly, to help you make smart financial decisions. That's really what the basics of this class are all about. Now, as we go to the next slide, you can see here, but, hmm, why is it that so many of us struggle with our personal finances? Well, part of it is because we really don't have many places to learn about these things anymore. There was a time, we think, that parents spent a little more time talking to their children about money, although quite frankly, I'm not really so sure if that's true in any generation. In fact, certainly these days, many parents don't talk to their children about the home finances, about their budget, about their level of income, and the challenges and decisions they make in terms of every month, how to spend that income. And quite frankly, very few high schools these days have personal finance courses, and so folks don't really learn about it in their homes. Many don't learn about it in their schools. Now, by the way, that second bullet point is changing. There is now a movement in many high schools across the United States and many state education boards to put in place and in some cases require personal finance education as a high school graduation requirement. That's really encouraging, but that's not quite how it is for many of us. I personally never learned about personal finance uh, from my high school. We didn't have anything like that when I went to high school. And I really didn't learn about it that much from my folks either. I realize that many of us in this course are probably in the same boat that I was coming up, right? So here's a question. You see the question at the end of that slide. Who does talk about money? Where do we hear about money? Well, these folks talk about money. Brands like Louis Vuitton and Apple, Mercedes. We see it in commercials and marketing and advertisements and billboards. We, nowadays, we hear it from influencers telling us what we should be buying to be one of the cool kids. We hear it from luxury brands telling us you deserve it. Or perhaps more suggestive, if you've arrived, if you're really one of the cool kids, you will own and carry this kind of a handbag or these kinds of shoes or drive that kind of car or live in this particular zip code, right? In fact, the most prevalent voices we hear are the voices not telling us how to save and invest our money necessarily, but certainly 24-7 telling us how to spend our money. And as a result, what happens? We are constantly told that our life is defined, that our self-esteem is identified and cemented by what we buy and what we spend. Very few of us are taught in any systematic sense about earning and saving. Even fewer of us are taught about the difference between saving and investing. And there is a very significant difference between these two. We'll talk about that in a coming module. Most importantly, I think one of the most disturbing things is that we have, for several generations, not really talked about delayed gratification. What is delayed gratification, or sometimes we call it deferred gratification? You see the definition at the bottom of the slide. 
it is exercising the discipline to resist the temptation of an immediate pleasure in the hope of obtaining a valuable and long-lasting reward in the long term. It's being willing to consistently say no to what would pleasure us immediately for the sake of something better down the road. And we all have temptations, right? I'll tell you one of my temptations. One of my temptations is soft serve ice cream, specifically from Dairy Queen. Man, I love that stuff. And I can't have it as often as I'd like because, quite frankly, I have some weight that I got to lose around my midsection. And it's getting harder and harder the older I get to lose weight. And so I have to exercise self-discipline to resist the temptation to stop over at the Dairy Queen and get a cone, right, for the sake of what? For the sake of obtaining a future long-term reward, which is better than the short-term gratification of that ice cream cone. And of course, we all know what that means, right? For many of us, it means we need to really think hard about what are we spending our money on in the short term for the sake of saving up for something more important in the long term. And quite frankly, we as an American people in our culture, we're just not good at thinking about delayed gratification. However, it's not always that way with all cultures and all people. Let me see if I can give you an example of this. You see here on this slide, this is a uh, typical storefront of a typical Chinese restaurant. Now, this could be any Chinese restaurant, any place in the world. But here's my point. Chinese restaurants used to be, well, if you closed your eyes, went to a downtown, closed your eyes and threw a rock, chances are in any direction, you'd land pretty close to a Chinese restaurant, right? They were all over the place. And one of the things that's happening, a phenomena here in the United States, the number of Chinese restaurants is drastically falling. Chinese restaurants are closing in large numbers and they're not being replaced by new Chinese restaurants. And so one of the questions uh, that uh, the Wall Street Journal asked uh, in an article is, why, what's going on here? Why is this the case? Is it because people's taste for Chinese food is changing or dropping? And it ends up that's not the case at all. Here's the reason why. And this is an illustration of delayed gratification. Many Chinese immigrants came here to the United States uh, with very few professional skills. They could wash laundry and they could cook Chinese food, but they could do very little else. But they had a dream, of course. They had a dream that life would be better for their children. That's not unique to Chinese culture, right? I think most cultures want life to be better for the next generation, for the children. And so Chinese immigrants did something about it. They started and opened Chinese restaurants and they slaved in those restaurants, sometimes the mother and the father, sometimes the mother, the father, and uncles and aunts and friends, right? And they would labor in these Chinese restaurants six to seven days a week. Why? so that their children might have the opportunity, they might have a chance at a better life, so that they would have to, they would be able to go to college and become doctors and lawyers and engineers, right? The, the old stereotype, which is actually, I could say this as a Chinese American, it's really true. My mom pushed me to become either an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> That's really true. Anyway, the Wall Street Journal went and investigated this and they talked to a lot of the owners of Chinese restaurants that were closing and they said, doesn't this make you sad? Isn't this something that um, troubles you that your restaurant is closing after all these years? And you know what the owner said? So many of them said, are you kidding me? This is success for us because this means our children will never have to work in the restaurant like we did. They will never have to sweat and work seven days a week and miss holidays. They went to college, they went to good schools. They're now doctors and lawyers and engineers and they'll never have to work in the restaurant. In fact, the reason we're closing the restaurant is so that we can retire and our children can take care of us. That's delayed gratification. That is being willing to say no to other things in order to work hard for the sake of the long view, the promised reward at the end. 
Now, of course, this is not, as I said before, it's not unique to Chinese people. Many cultures are willing to go through really hard work for the sake of the next generation. This is just an illustration of a principle that many ways here in the United States, for Americans, we've kind of lost sight of deferred gratification. And so I invite you to think of personal finance in these terms. In fact, in this last slide, when we look at the whole topic of the journey that we are starting in this course, it's going to be like this. It's going to be a little bit of a winding road. It's going to be complicated and we're going to ask you to think really hard and examine your own self about, well, answering questions about why you spend the money you spend in the way that you do, as well as what would you like at the end of the road? What are some of the long-term goals you would like to see in your life? And how can you plan now to get there or at least have a good chance of accomplishing those goals and those kinds of things at the end of the journey? Well, that's what this class is all about. And so uh, as we conclude and wrap up this short little video micro lecture, I am so happy that you are part of this class. I'm hoping that together in this journey, we both learn some really, really great things about ourselves, about our finances, and about better ways that we can plan for our futures. Welcome to Business 163 Personal Finance. Let's have a wonderful course together. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next lecture.